I was really interested in hearing the sounds of hard drives and microprocessors. Those are the things that made me think of data. And I thought, well, let's transcribe those sounds. So I spent a year putting these microphones on anything that might have a microprocessor in it or a hard drive in it. And I just got the most amazing variety of sounds from placing these microphones on TVs to remote controls to food processors to sound recorders. I mean, I would put the mic on the sound recorder I was recording with while I was doing it. Um, anything that I thought had a microchip in it and data was flowing through it, I was capturing the sounds as they were happening. And even, you know, even in my car, I put contact mics and EMF mics on the, the brain of my electric car or the motors. And those had all these fascinating... It was just another world of sort of electronics happening in ways that I, 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 I didn't hear with my own ear. So it was a it was a real it was a real surprise. Can you talk about some of the techniques you used to record these sounds? Some are straight open air with traditional hypercardioid and shotgun mics pointed at things that are fairly loud in the environment like hard drives. Um, you know, it's like disk chatter and read-write cycles on the mechanics of a hard drive. Sometimes I'd open up a hard drive so it, you, you, you would, it wouldn't be as muffled inside the actual in, uh, casing. The two real hero uh, microphones were this EMF mic, electromagnetic frequency mic, that could capture the fields around uh, microprocessors. And it's just a little mic about this big. And, but it had two. It was a stereo transducer, and you could just put it up next to anything electric. You could put it up like I got these great hums and buzzes from my guitar amps. These are old tube-based guitar amps with ancient transistors in them, but they made really gorgeous, rich, warm sounds. Or you could put them next to a piece of electronic equipment. I mean. I can't remember, you know, your vacuum cleaner has a microprocessor in it or, or televisions, of course. Anything with a screen on it is going to be emitting some kind of interesting stuff. And you, could, you would find it almost like treasure hunting. You move the mic around and you could find out where the central processor was in any particular device because that's where all, all of a sudden you'd be tick, 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 all the activity is happening. Search and destroy mission. And contact microphones, um, piezoelectric transducers that you put a little piece of stickiness on, and they're little round metallic discs that transduce vibration. And you could put that on any one of the things I just described and capture also uh, electronic vibrations. And those yielded some of these sounds as well. These will be very useful for science fiction, for robots and computers and, and um, 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 futuristic equipment or weaponry. They evoke the idea that something sophisticated and computerized is happening by enabling a device or turning on a device. Um, or a device malfunctioning. I think a portion of these sounds are, are, are like static-based, rizzy sounds that feel like this piece of equipment isn't in good condition. It's, it's falling apart or it's, it's fritzing out. So they're, they're useful for things like this. So this most likely, certainly for feature films and gaming, are great for anything futuristic for equipment and gear and computers. <laughs> 